Hello everyone, this is Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com and today we're going to finally make that fading images slideshow that we have been talking about this whole time. So, let's open up Flash and see where we left off, as we do with every tutorial. So we see we have Home Flash right here, we have Layer 1 down here, and in our Library panel we have our four images. In our Properties panel we see it's Home Flash, we see it's Action Script 2, and it's 500 by 375 so what we are going to do now is actually start making that fading images slideshow there are going to be a couple things that i just need you to follow along with me you won't get them when i'm telling you what to do but i'll explain them after trust me i won't leave you to hang and dry so the first thing we're going to do is rename layer one so double click layer one and let's call it image underscore one now we want to drag in that first image so go to library and let's go to tigers.jpg and let's drag those in Drag it in wherever you want. Now go to your properties panel and let's align that image. So you're going to see that you have an X and Y axis here. That's the X and Y axis for that image. So click whatever number is in your X, make it zero, click tab, and go to the other one and make it zero and click tab again. So now you have the image where you want it to be. Right after you insert an image, you always have to convert it to a symbol. So go modify, convert to symbol, and type in image underscore one and click OK. Now that you've made it a symbol, you can actually start manipulating the um, timeline. So we want it to play for 20 frames. So go to your 20 and insert a keyframe. Go to 30, insert a keyframe. Create a new layer by clicking create a new layer down here. Double click layer 2 and call it image 2. Enter. Go to 20 on your image 2 and insert a keyframe. Now come to your library, go to where you have lion.jpg, and drag lion.jpg onto the canvas. Go to your properties panel, and let's make that x-axis 0 and that y 0. Now we are going to um, make this a um, symbol, so go modify, convert to symbol, and call it image underscore 2. OK. So go to 30, insert a keyframe, go to 50 insert a keyframe, and go to 60, and insert a keyframe. Every time we insert an image, we're going to insert that image, and then we're going to go 10, 20, 10. That is going to be the little, I guess, the little routine that we are going to keep doing. So you're going to get that routine pretty quick. So create a new layer, rename that layer. It's going to be the same process every time, guys. So image three. And let's go to our, um, let's create it a, um, insert a keyframe on 50, and then go to your library, and let's find the, let's insert cheetah.jpg. So drag cheetah in there, properties, x, 0, y, 0, and modify, convert to symbol, image, underscore 3, OK, and go to 60 insert a keyframe, go to 80, insert a keyframe, and go to 90, insert a keyframe. So we went 10, 20, 10. Now we're going to make our last, so we're going to insert that last layer, go to 80, insert a keyframe, and now we are going to insert that image. So go down to our last image, which is leopard. So drag that in, properties, x, 0, y, 0, modify, convert to symbol, image, underscore 4, OK. So now 10, 20, 10. So right click, insert a keyframe, go to 110, insert a keyframe, and go to 120, insert a keyframe. If you did not finish at 120, then you made a mistake. Everyone goes 20, 10, 20, 10. It's a, it's a big jumble of uh, information, I know. But if you made a mistake, go back, check it out again, and I'm sure you will find your mistake. So if you finish at 120, I want you, oh, we didn't rename this layer. Layer 4, rename that image underscore 4. I'm sure somebody caught that. So under 120, the last thing we are going to do, the last keyframe we are going to add is right under, go to image 1, and click right that where, where it says 120 and right click insert a keyframe down there. Now what we are going to do is we are going to insert classic tweens. 
Trust me, just follow along and you will get everything when it's all done. So we're going to insert a whole bunch of classic tweens. So in between 110 and 120, click somewhere in there, right click, create a classic tween. Between 80 and 90 on the top one, right click, create a classic tween. Between 50 and 60 on the top, right click, create a classic tween. And between 20 and 30 on the top, right click, create a classic tween. Now, in the beginning of each one of these tweens, we are going to change the opacity of the first image so that it transitions into the second image. Don't understand? I'll show you right now. So right where it says 20, in the beginning of that keyframe, click the image, very important, click frame 20, then click the image. Trust me, somebody is going to miss that. After you click the image, go style in your color effect and go to alpha and make sure it is all the way on zero. Now on 50 in the beginning of that keyframe, click the image, change your style, alpha, and make sure it's zero. In 80, click the image, style, alpha, make sure it's zero. And then on our last one, you're going to click at the very end of the video and click the snow leopard and change your style, alpha, to zero and you will see that it will transition into the beginning image again. The last thing we're going to do is change the frames per second. As you can see, this is 24 frames per second, so it shows the whole thing in only five seconds. That is way too fast. So let's click this 24, and let's make it around seven, and click enter. Now it'll show in about 17 seconds. That's way better. It'll give our users time to actually read the descriptions. So let's go File, Publish Preview, in Flash. So we have our first image, then it transitions into our second image, transitions into our third image, and then transitions into our last image. And after we see our last image, it transitions back into our first image, and then it starts up all over again. You have created your first fading images slideshow. So it looks professional, it looks like it goes in a website, and it can go right next to whatever kind of text you have next to it. So in the next tutorial, we're going to start doing things like forward and next button and pause buttons and things like that. So I'm so glad that you've made it this far. Thank you for watching this tutorial, and stay tuned for the next one.